this. Hello, very good morning to all of you guys. Welcome back to the another session of our restoration discussion about the restoration age. Okay, we were discussing about the restoration drama, restoration poetry and the historical background of the history, restoration, right? So, in this session, we are going to deal with the chronological sequence or the historical chronology of restoration age. Guys, along with the study of poetry, drama, uh, dramatis, characteristics that, uh, uh, that chronological order of kings, you have to remember the year of publishing, that the publishing year of every work of each age and when it was published and who was published, who is the author. So that chronological order of books publication and the chronological order of kings and the hierarchy or the chronological order of historical background which were the, what are the events what were the events which took place during restoration age not only for the restoration age for all the age what were the events that took place what were the historical events that took place during that period when was it took place and when was what were the characters of that age so these are also equally important uh, along with the literature part of that each age so in this video we are going to discuss about the chronological historical chronology of restoration age so I welcome all of you to the next live session of IFAS. I am Swati Map, your faculty of English UGC Net Set Gate Preparation. So hi, very good morning Das. Have a nice day. Very good morning. Yes, restoration period is from 1660 to 1700. Very good. That 100, that uh, 40 years, that is 1660 to 1700. So that is the period of restoration. During this period, during this period, there happened a lots of events, lots of cultural, historical events. So we have to analyze we have to remember we have to be aware about that historical events hi pradeek welcome back hi have a nice day very good morning hi so it's nice to see you all in the live sessions guys hi kinta welcome back hi nice to see you good morning yeah okay fine so let's start without any delay of this chronological uh, period this chronological discussion so come with me make the victory okay that's all about to say you guys so let's start okay yes restoration age that restoration happened in 1660, right? By the ascension of, by the ascension of, oh, uh, what, uh, by what backing of this Charles II, okay, Charles II from Paris. So, restoration happened, monarchy restored in 1660. So, Charles II restored to the throne in 1660. There happened our restoration age, right? there happened our restoration age all right so it is in 1660 charles second what's happened okay just a moment not in the selection pen okay fine okay fine so in 1660 charles second was restored to the throne okay so monarchy restored in 1661, Clarendon Code. What is Clarendon Code? What is Clarendon Code? Remember, guys, Cavalier Parliament of Charles II passes series of repressive laws against non conformist English accuser, against non conformist, that is, 
what Clarendon code. Okay, that is Clarendon code. Clarendon code means something which is against the law, not against law, which includes what the repressive laws against non conformity So, that is Clarendon code, guys. That is Clarendon code and it is. It was in 1661. So, it happened in 1661. That is Clarendon Code. Yes, Kinta, I am fine. Okay, it is divided into many events such as political turmoil from 1685, Glorious Revolution, 1688. Yes, it is this restoration is enriched with so much historical backgrounds or historical events. That's why this restoration period, even though it is the very shortest period, it is very important in your British literature, history of British literature. Okay. Along with your literature part, you have to be strong in history also. Okay, you have to be strong in history. Then only you can solve the questions from British literature. So, that is since 1661 Clarendon Code and Cavalier Parliament of Charles II passes series of repressive laws against non conformists there, That was the period that Cavalier Parliament of Charles II, that they passed series of repressive laws. Okay, against whom? Against non conformists Then, English occur Bombay. You know, Bombay, it was the period in 1661, English occurred our Bombay. Okay, so that is the most important year, 1661. Okay, in 1600s, right? In 1600s, East India Company started in India. They settled, East India Company came to India in 1600, right? So, it is 1661, English acquired Bombay. So, 1662, what happened? Act of Uniformity passed in London, in England, okay? Act of Uniformity. Act of uni Uniformity was passed in 1662. Okay. Then, in 1665, Great Plague happened. Very important. Very important. Okay. Very important point. That is, in 1665, Great Plague in London. Great Plague of London happened. Okay, we saw great plague of plague in London and great fire in London. In which diaries, in which diaries diary, comment in the comment box. Yesterday we discussed about this, right? Yesterday we have discussed about the diaries of the Restoration Age. So great plague in London happened in 1665. Okay, yes, Samuel Pepe. Okay, Samuel Puppy. Okay, Samuel Puppy's diary is a reflection of great plague and great fire in London. All right, very good, Kinta. Then, then we have in 1666 great fire of London. Okay, so great fire of London happened in 1666. Great Plague in London happened in 1665. In 1668, Triple Alliance of England, Netherlands and Sweden against France. Okay. Triple Alliance. They made a Triple Alliance with England. England made a Triple Alliance with Netherlands and Sweden. Against whom? France in 1668. Okay. So, that was the period of Triple Alliance in 1668. Then we have a secret treaty of Dover between Charles II of England and Louis XIV of France to restore the Roman Catholicism to England. In order to restore the Roman Catholic beliefs, Roman Catholic Catholicism in England, we have a treaty of Dover, okay, Dover Beach, right, Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach, right, so we have a treaty of uh, Dover, this Dover Beach, that 
C connects England and France, right? England and France. That's why from Dover Beach, the cliff of the Dover Beach, Matthew Arnold uh, wrote the poem Dover Beach, right? So, in 1670, they made a treaty of Dover between Charles II of the England and Louis XIV. Louis XIV, Louis XIV of France to restore Roman Catholicism to England. So, Treaty of Dover is between, Treaty of Dover was between Charles II of England and Louis XIV of France. For, for what purpose? To restore the Roman Catholicism in England. Okay. So, that's all about 1670. Have you got it? Kinda Pratik Das, all of you got it? Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So, yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, next one. What happened in next? In 1686, in 1686, James II disregards Test Act. So, in 1686, that was the period of 1686, when jo James II disregarded Test Act. So, Roman Catholics appointed to public office. Okay. So, in James, in 1686, James II disregards Test Act. And along with that, Roman Catholics appointed to public service. Okay. So, in 1680, we have Dover Treaty, right? In 1670. Okay. So, in 1670, we have Dover Treaty, right? Treaty of Dover. In 1686, Roman Catholics appointed to public office. Okay. Then, the next significant year is 1688, 1688, that is England's glorious revolution, right? Glorious revolution, yet another important point, yet another important point, that is glorious revolution. So, when was the glorious revolution, what is the period of glorious revolution? In 1688, right? In 1688, okay? So, that is all about the Glorious Revolution year in 1688. Very important year. Okay. Glorious Revolution. That made Charles II would end reign. Sorry. Charles II ruled uh, up to 1700. But by 1689, Charles II was torn from the throne, the England throne and who came William III and Mary II became the monarch of England by 1689. So, this event was happened after the result of glorious revolution, right? Glorious revolution. Removal of Charles II, the King Charles II and William III ascended in the throne. Okay. So, glorious revolution, sorry, glorious revolution was in 1688. Okay. Uh, yes, Kinda William. Bloodless revolution. Yeah, bloodless revolution. Glorious revolution is known as bloodless revolution. Okay. So, in 1689, the next king, William III and, the, and his queen, Mary II, beca become joint monarchs of England and Scotland. They were the rulers of Scotland and after glorious revolution William sec, sorry William III became the monarch of England also so they they become the joint monarchs of England and Scotland right all right. in 1694 the unfortunate year that is death of Mary Mary II okay death of Mary happened in 1694 so, 1689, she was the queen of, she became the queen of both England and 
Scotland. She became the queen of both England and Scotland. Okay. Got the idea guys? All right. Okay. So the next. Very important point. In 1660, we have John Dryden's Austria Redux. We have John Dryden's Austria Redux, right? Austria Redux. So, John Dryden's the famous work, Austria Redux, was published in 1660. Okay, in 1660. Next, in 1661, the advancement of experimental philosophy by Abraham Cowley. So, we saw the historical background. In the last slides, it was about the historical background up to 1694. It was all about the historical background of restoration era. From the from this slide, from the next slide, that is from this slide, it's all about the chronological sequence of the publishing of literary works during restoration age. Okay, got the idea? Got it? Got the idea? So, in 1661, we have the advancement of experimental philosophy by Abraham Cowley. So, Abraham Cowley published his famous work, The Advancement of Experimental Philosophy in 1661. Got it? Next, in 1662, what is the significance of the year 1662? We have Thomas Fuller's The History of the Worthies of England. So, the work that is the history of worthies, that is the history of worthies of England. History of worthies of England. This, uh, what, this work, history of worthies of England is an historical work written by Thomas Fuller. Okay, written by Thomas Fuller. So, Thomas Fuller was in the age of 1662, 1660, so restoration age. In 1662, Thomas Fuller published his historical work, that is, History of the Worthies of England. So, in 1661, we have Abraham Cowley. We, in 1662, we have Thomas Fuller's work. But in 1660, we have John Dryden's work. Right? Okay. Then, in 1663, again, Abraham Cowley came with his verses upon the several occasions. Okay, in 1663, again, Abraham Cowley came with, Abraham Cowley came with his verses upon the several occasions. Along with Abraham Cowley, we have William Devanand. Okay, Sir William Devanand, his poem, to, to the king's most sacred majesty. So, this is Sir William Devanand's poem work. That is a poem. That is poem to the king's most sacred majesty. Okay. This is also published in the year 1663. Not it? All right. Then we have in 1664, again John Dryden came. After 1666, Austria Redux of John Dryden. In 1664, again John Dryden came with his wonderful work that is the Rival Ladies. The Rival Ladies. Okay. So, 1664. 1664, John Dryden's The Rival Ladies. All right. So, 1663 what happened? And 1664 what happened? Publishing, publishing of Abraham Cowley's Verses upon the several occasions. Sir William Devanand poem to the most sacred majesty. In 1664, John Trident published his The Rival Ladies. The Rival Ladies. Okay, Kinta, got it? Fine. All right. So, what's in the next slide? Okay, what is the next 
publishing year, chronology of year. So, it is same year, it is in the same year that is 1664, we have John Dryden, John Dryden and Sir Robert Howard, the Indian Queen. Look at the work, the Indian, Indian Queen. See, just a moment. Yes. So, Indian Queen, Indian Queen by Sir Robert Howard. Sir Robert Howard. Okay, Indian Queen by Sir Robert Howard. Okay, in 1664. And with George Etheridge, with and by sorry, and with George Etheridge, what happened? The comical revenge or love in a tub was published in also 1664 in the year of 1664 in the year of 1664 again we have george edrich love in a tub okay love in a tub love in a tub is subtitle what is the main title that is comical revenge comical revenge so love in a tub is a subtitle of that book the main title is the comical revenge all right, okay. So, in 1666, another one is 1666, another year is 1666. We have John Bunyan, John Bunyan's word, grace abounding to the chief of sinners. Grace abounding to the chief of sinners. Okay, so John Bunyan published his work Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners in the year 1666. So we have John Dryden, Abraham Curley, George Edridge, John Bunyan as the writers in Restoration Age. Got it? Hinta, Pratik, yeah, all of you. The viewers, the lovely viewers, most respected viewers, all of you got the idea about research and age chronology and publishing you? Okay, fine. Let's move on to the next slide, next chronology. Again, we have John Dryden. So, John Dryden flourished the age. 1667. Okay. In 1667, John Dryden's Enimbra Okay. Enimbra Bills. The Year of Wonders in 1666. So, in 1666, that is, in 1666, we have the Year of Wonders. In 1667, John Dryden published Enimbra Okay. So, this is the most granted, most known and what epic what epic work that is epoch making work that is any miraculous okay any miraculous so publishing year of john dryden's any miraculous is 1667 again in 1668 again in 1668 we have john dryden essay of dramatic poesy see critical work most important, most discussed one, okay, essay on dramatic poesy. So, essay on dramatic poesy, we will discuss in detail about John Dryden's work, all the authors' work in our bachelor session, okay. In this YouTube live session, I will give you an overall idea of the common uh, points, most important points, but along with the this common points or this capsule class you need to know about the detailed explanation detailed knowledge of the of each age of english literature british literature okay so british literature is the core concept of ugc net set gate examination any examination which is related to english literature so you sh you should have you should possess you should have a strong foundation in British literature, the year, the publishing year, the authors, which age, the authors belongs to which age, belong to which age, okay, in the which age they belong to, in the which age they published their work, in which year, 
what is that work what are the important characters in that work so that is very important according to the your nta ugc net examination not only for your ugc net jrf examination it will help you in your get examination preparation in your set examination preparation and any public service service commission test for assistant professor okay so the syllabus is same but you need a different mode of what strategy okay you need a different mode of strategy for each examination for nda ugc net examination you need to uh, what understand the pattern of that uh, question question making okay for mp set examination you have to know how will be not the mp set examination for all the set examination which is conducted by each state so you need to you need to be very aware of the question pattern of that particular examination so that is the overall idea so you have to be very strong in british literature the historical chronological and literature background that's why i am putting this much effort for you guys okay so in 1670 we have again george edrish so in 1670 again george edrish came with his famous work she would if she could comedy of manners right comedy of manners okay comedy of humors comedy of manners what is the difference between comedy of manners and comedy of humors we have already discussed in the previous session right so there is no room for the further discussion of comedy of manners you can either watch that video or you can either come to the or you can come to the live sessions of batch live sessions of our ifas okay so that's all about george edrish that is in 1670 he published his work she would if she could then afra ben what is the importance of afra ben how afra ben is important she was the first woman writer to be completely completely established so she was the first woman write, writer writer uh, word who who is completely established in the literature field in the writing field right afra ben's orongo we saw afra ben's orongo and other literary works in the previous session okay so afra ben afra ben the forced marriage afra ben the forced marriage is a work by afra ben it is also published in 1670 okay the forced marriage the provoked husband right afra ben then we have again john dryden again john dryden yes it is again john dryden john dryden's conquest of granada john dryden conquest of granada right so in which year john dryden published his work conquest of granada in which year that is in 1670 that is in 1670 all right moving on to the next period that is in 1672 okay dryden be jalwaha hamara oh yes dryden dryden is the most important uh, work sorry author dryden is the most important person as a person as a writer as a critic you can't avoid john dryden okay especially his dramatic poetry okay especially his dramatic poetry essay on dramatic poetry so that's all about dryden and again john dryden in 1672 after granada yes he was the representative of the restoration age and he was the representative of the neo classical age also first during that first period of neo classical age we have john dryden after john dryden we have alexander pope okay then that chronology of fathers goes on so john dryden is a representative of both neo classical age both restoration age and neoclassical age that is the importance of 
John Dryden. Okay. So in 1672, again John Dryden published. You often forgo dates and chronological. See, Kinda, it's quite a word, a natural. We all forgot or even some dates, some chronological orders. But it is important to be important to maintain the consistency. That is consistency. The word I am again stressing that word consistency. Make making revision will help you. That will help you to revise. That will help you to remind. So you have to revise all the years in the chronological order also. Don't shuffle with the years. Right? Don't shuffle the years. If you start from Anglo-Saxon literature. You start from Anglo-Saxon literature, then study Old English literature, then, then study Middle English literature, then you have to come the Modern English literature. The, otherwise, first you start the Anglo-Saxon literature, then you study Middle English literature, then you study Old English literature, then you study Modern English literature. It will shuffle all the things, guys. It will shuffle. So, you have to be very focused. Okay, very focused and you have to maintain that chronological order sequence. Okay, you have to study all the things. You have to revise all the things in that chronological sequence. Generally, you can uh, recollect all the things. You can remember all the things. At least you will get an idea who comes first, who comes then, who comes the last. Okay, which work is the first work? Which work is published very first? Which work is the latest one? Okay, so at least you will get an idea, awareness about that years or that chronological art. Okay. <laughs> Kinda, it's all about struggle. Okay, struggling. Okay, it's all about struggling. I will tell you as a personal, as a personal, my personal suggestion is, that revision makes everything. Guys, I used to revise all the things every day. In the daytime, I used to study the things. In the night, I revised all the things uh, which I had studied in the daytime. Okay, so revision makes all the things. That is, that, is, that, that is the matter. Revision is the matter. Okay, revision matters everything. See, uh, if you revise from day by day, if you revise the things day by day, you will get the things are uh, things will store. Okay, the things are things will store to your brain. Okay, your mind. Okay, so don't uh, disappoint with that uh, what shuffling of years. Okay, don't disappoint. Keep going. Okay, keep going. Revise. If you if you can't remember any year. Then go and find the year. Revise it. Store it. Okay. Store it. Before your examination. That matters. Before your examination. Now now you, you will get I think 4 months. So August is coming to end. Okay. Almost it is ended. Completed August month. So you will get September, October, November. In December month you will have all the examination. What uh, hurry bury. So this three months matter. Okay, these three months matter. So, you have to collect all the data within this three months. You have to analyze all the data. You have to revise all the data. You have to do test series. See, we are conducting test series. We are conducting Sunday test. We are conducting DPP for our batch live sessions. And I am taking all the batch life sessions all the batch so now in the batch life i am taking literary theory by tomorrow i will complete the, this literary theory okay after doing the this literary theory i will be taking a fresh topic it will be updated in your batch life profile so do watch that classes do attend that classes then you will get the idea or you will get all the information not the idea you will get the idea from this live class if you attend if you attend our batch live session along with this live class then you will get complete information about 
English literature. Not English literature. We have American literature. We have Australian literature, African literature, all continental literature, all the years, all the writers, all the works, characters. You have to be remembered, guys. This is the challenge that you are facing. This is the thing that you are facing. And if you want, to, if you qualify this UGC net or JRF or GATE examination, that means you defeated the syllabus. That's the thing, guys. You defeated the syllabus. So anyway, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. That's the fun behind every competitive examination. Okay. So that spirit, you should maintain that spirit. Yes, I have to crack. I have to defeat the examination. I have to defeat the syllabus. Okay. So, do hard work along with smart work. Merely doing hard work never matters. Okay. So, do smart work and hard work. Balance your smart work and hard work. Okay. Crack the examination, defeat the syllabus. That's, that matters. Alright. Okay. So, Let's continue. So, in 1672, John Dryden published his work, the sorry, the assignation of yes, the assignation and marriage a large mode. Okay, marriage uh, the assignation and marriage in large mode. Okay, in 1672. So, I have to uh, deviate my track from that motivational class to this chronological class. Okay. So, in 1675, William Boy Shirley. In 1675, William Boy Shirley wrote the country wife. We saw William Boy Shirley in detail in the previous live session. Okay. So, in 1675, William Boy Shirley published his Comedy of Manners, the most important, most discussed, most famous one, that is the country wife. Okay. Then, in 1675, also we have John Trident. We can't, we can't what, exclude John Trident from Restoration Age. In 1675, we have John Dryden Aurangzeb. John Dryden concentrated on our Indian history, Indian culture. So, he was concentrated in our Indian history. That's why he wrote uh, too much about India. Okay, the Indian kings, Aurangzeb. So, these are all about Indian history, Indian culture. See how Westerns are concerned with our culture, our history. How much important, see how much important our history. Okay, so John Trident's Aurangzeb. Okay, fine, all right. So please tell me who is the son of Aurangzeb? Aurangzeb, so, sorry, Aurangzeb. Yeah, that's not important. Okay, Aurangzeb was the son of whom? Aurangzeb was the son of whom? Please tell me if you if you don't know, that's shameful for you guys. Aurangzeb. Kinda, Pratik, Das, tell me. Who is the father of Aurangzeb? That is, Aurangzeb was the son of whom? Yes, Shah Jahan, right here. Kinda, right. Oh, very good, Kinda, Shah Jahan. Okay, so, okay, fine. Thank you so much for answering my question. So, John Dryden's Aurangzeb, okay. So, Aurangzeb was the last Mughal emperor, right? Last Mughal emperor. So, I am not taking the Indian history. I am taking the British histories. Okay, so, never go to Indian history in this time. Okay, after finishing this class, you can go to Indian history also. Okay, Mughal emperors, all the Mughal, Mughal emperors. Okay. So, John Dryden, Aurangzeb, right? Then, then we have in 1676, that is George Etheridge, the man of mode. So, George Etheridge again comes in 1676 with his, the man of mode. 
okay then again afra ben's the rover the very famous work the rover by afra ben in 1677 1677 the very famous work rover by afra ben in 1678 we have john bunyan okay john bunyan john bunyan in the pilgrim's progress okay pilgrim's progress very important work in the point of view of your nta examination ugc net examination pilgrim's progress okay john bunyan in 1678 in again in 1678 we have john dryden all for love again in 1678 we have john dryden all for love okay all right up to here all right ki now fine fine okay perfect then another one is in 1680 we have again john ban the life and death of mr batman not batman batman this is batman okay life and death of mr batman after pilgrim's progress john banian published john banian wrote the life and death of mr batman in 1680 okay fine in 1682 again john dryden guys we have a lot to study we have to study a lot about john dryden okay so 1682 this chronology reveals you you should be very focused in john dryden okay so in 1682 in 1682 john dryden macplacken okay in 1682 john dryden mac macplacken came to english literature history of english literature okay in the history of english literature in 1682 we have a satirical poem macplacken by john dryden okay john dryden okay fine again afra ben came in 1688 with her orongo or the royal slave see orongo or the royal slave orongo subtitle be focused on the subtitles of the work guys orongo subtitles orongo subtitle is the royal slave it's all about the african slave that is all about an african king who became a slave african slave right so that is in 1688 we have afra ben's orongo or the royal slave oh right fine and in 1689 we have john locke john locke's two treaties of government a letter concerning toleration see in 1689 we have john locke's two treaties of government government a letter concerning toleration again in 1690 we again have john locke an essay concerning concerning human understanding okay john locke's an essay concerning human understanding that is published in 1690 okay in 1694 again we have william congreve again we have six, uh, william congreve in 1694 with his double dealer we saw william congreve the double dealer, dealer in the previous session right so 1694 is the most important uh, year for william congreve it's the year of publication of publishing of the double dealer okay year of publishing the double dealer of william congreve all right next in 1698 in 1698 we have jeremy collier a short view of the immortality and profaneness of the english stage we have 1698 work by jeremy collier a short view of the immortality and profaneness of the english stage right jeremy collier then in 1700 at the end of the restoration age in 1700 we have 
George Farrakhan. What? Who? George Farrakhan with his the constant couple. And we have John Bandrow, the Pilgrim, a comedy. So, in 1700, John Farquhar published his constant couple. And in 1700 also, we have another writer that is John Vandrew. He published his work, The Pilgrim, a comedy. All right. Okay. Fine. So, that's all about today's chronology about restoration age. See, this is the most important or the overall idea about restoration age. You should be very focused on the uh, word, these kinds of restoration chronological details. Okay, so from 1660, we saw 1700, we saw lots of historical events. We saw lots of publishing years of different, different works by authors. Uh, John Dryden, what, William Con George Farrakhan, Congreve, John Van Brook, Jeremy Collier, uh, Afra Ben, such kind of writers were granted in restoration period. Okay. So, this, these are the most important. This is the most. So, you will get, certainly you will get, I think, two to three questions from this class only for your NTA examination. Certainly you will get. Okay from the chronological order. So, NTA is again and again I am telling that, I am telling that NTA is focusing upon the chronological sequence of the works or the authors. So, certainly you will get two to three questions from this lecture only, this live class only. So, be focused. Okay, do running notes or make notes, of, make notes of your own from this class. And do watch all the live sessions and all the streamings, all the what videos we are uploading about English literature and about net preparation. Okay, it will help you more and more. It will add you more knowledge to your preparation. Okay, so I hope all of you enjoyed, all of you got the idea about restoration chronological order, restoration history backgrounds from this class. And I hope all of you will get full marks from this restoration age. Okay. So, we did, I think, I think uh, three or four, not three or four, four to five series, lecture series or four to five live lecture series about restoration page only, this restoration period only. So, certainly you will get two to three questions. Okay. Each question is very important. Okay, so each question is very important. So, do watch these sessions. Go for our live sessions. Okay, we will see you in the next live session with yet another important topic. Okay, that's all about today's class. Thank you so much, Kinta. If it is fruitful session for you, then it is, will be very fruitful for me also. Okay, your victory is my victory. Your success is my success. Okay, so that's why. So, do watch the videos, subscribe this channel, share this channel to everyone, those who are struggling, those who are preparing for NTA UGC net examination. Okay, so that's all about today's session. See you in the next session, guys. Let me leave. Okay, thank you. Bye. Have a nice day.